Hey guys, welcome to Living the Logic. This is Manish Narayan, and today we're going to talk about .NET 8 microservices talking to MongoDB. All right, so what we're going to do is host a local MongoDB on Docker, and uh, once we grab the image, run the MongoDB, I'm going to show you how to quickly integrate the MongoDB with your .NET 8 web API. So first step, uh, let's head over to Docker. Uh, and if I open Docker, if you remember in our last video, we pulled the latest Redis image and we started up Redis locally. And what I'm going to do is use the Docker terminal here and I'll start to pull. I'm going to enable that terminal. All right. And what I'll do is start to pull the Docker Mongo DB. All right. So what I'm going to do is run Docker pull Mongo. All right, so it should run and grab the latest Mongo image, All right? Uh, once that's complete, we're gonna go ahead and start up the Mongo container, all right? And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Should be downloading Mongo, almost there. All right, almost there, 242 MB. And uh, once we set up Mongo locally, you'll see how simple it is to integrate your .NET microservices to MongoDB. All right, just as simple as connecting to Redis in the last video. All right, so once MongoDB is pulled, the latest image, there we go, everything is complete. I'm going to then run some commands and start up Mongo on a local container. So what I'm going to do is run docker run minus d minus minus name, and we'll call it MongoDB container. And remember the port by default Mongo runs on is 27017. So 27017, okay? And we'll say the volume is set to Mongo data, all right? And we'll say slash data slash DB. And then we'll run it by using Mongo command. All right, uh, once that runs, I'll get an uh, image ID there. Uh, container, uh, there we go, container's up. Mongo DB is running on localhost, uh, port 27017. Now, in order to visualize Mongo, uh, you can use an admin tool. I use MongoDB Compass. All right, I'll pull that over. And here you can connect to localhost, right? Uh, and then what we can do is create our first database and then add a collection. So what I'll do is uh, add a plus sign, create a collection. Okay, well, actually we can add a new database here. So we'll do a plus sign on the local up here, plus database. We'll say this is, let's say the weather DB. And the collection name will say weather, uh, weather collection. Okay, weather collection, and we'll create the database. Perfect. So we have no uh, records at this time. What we're going to do is set up a new .NET 8 microservice. So I'll create a new project in Visual Studio. We'll choose uh, ASP.NET Core Web API. Click on Next. All right, and I'll put this under, we'll call this Mongo Tester, just like we did the Redis Tester, Mongo Tester. And we'll call this the Mongo uh, Weather API, okay? And I'll click on Next. Uh, I'm gonna choose .NET 8 for the framework, leave everything else default, click on Create. Okay, now we have our Weather API. So uh, we can just go ahead and launch it, test it out, make sure the Swagger page comes up. Okay, should launch the .NET 8 API, kind of similar to how we did the Redis connection in the last video. So we're waiting for that to load up. Uh, see the command prompt come up. In a second, we should see the Swagger page come up. All right, there we go. The UI is up. Let me go ahead and bring over the Swagger page. All right, so we get our basic out of the box get weather forecast. We'll click on execute. And we see a list of weather forecasts. All right, perfect. So API is up and running. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is close that down. Let's go ahead and right click the project. Add our manage NuGet packages for MongoDB. So we're going to go ahead and get the Mongo MongoDB, oops, MongoDB, and you should see a MongoDB.driver. Go ahead and get the latest version, 3.1.0. OK, 
apply, accept. All right, you have MongoDB installed. So the very first thing we're going to do is head over to our app settings. We're going to add a new entry for our connection string. So I'm going to add the value database settings and add a connection string and our collection name and our database name. So we're going to say database settings. Okay, add a new JSON object here. Connection string. And that's going to be our MongoDB uh, local host and port 27017. 27017. And we're going to say read preference equals primary. And we'll say and SSL equal, equals false. OK. Next, we're going to add our database name. So we named that weather DB. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Weather DB and weather collection. All right. So weather DB and our collection name is going to equal weather collection. All right, I'll go ahead and save that. All right, next, we're going to make a change to our weather forecast out of the box model. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to add a GUID to that. So we'll say BSON ID. Okay, I'm going to add a, a reference to the package MongoDB. And here, let's create a GUID for the uh, ID for the weather. So we'll say BSON representation. And we'll say BSON type dot string. Okay, and I can actually get rid of this guy and add a reference to MongoDB.json. And we'll make this a public GUID ID. Add a getter setter. Okay. Next, we have uh, the. We'll leave the rest of the properties the same. So we'll have a BSON element. Okay, it's kind of like naming uh, JSON attributes. So BSON element is going to be the date. So let's we'll call it date. Okay, and the representation. So BSON representation. Is going to be a BSON type dot date time. Okay, and then uh, the rest of them can be just defaults. So it's going to be a public, sorry, it's going to be a BSON element. And it's going to be temperature, so call it temperature C. Okay, and this can be BSON representation, and we'll call this in 64. Okay, and we can copy this over for the temperature Fahrenheit. Okay, and we'll just name this temperature F. And finally, the string will make it BSON element, and that's going to be summary. Okay, by default, it should be a string there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this weather forecast. Next thing we do is create our uh, weather uh, context. All right, so we'll add a new file. We'll add an interface. And that's going to be our I weather context. Okay, normally you have you know, your layers with the services and repositories. But here I'm going to just show you quickly how to integrate MongoDB. Then we can refactor it later on. So we'll have a public interface weather context. Uh, let's name that iWeather context. Sorry. Rename that to iWeather forecast. Weather context. Sorry. Go ahead and rename that class. There we go. And we'll have an iMongo 
collection of type weather forecast. And we'll call this forecast. And we'll add a getter. OK, uh, next thing to do is create an implementation of the flight, uh, the weather context. So we'll add a right click, add class, weather context. OK, this class will implement I weather context. And here, we're going to create a collection, so public I Mongo collection of weather forecast. We'll call it forecast. Okay. And now in the constructor, public weather context, we'll inject uh, the configuration. So I configuration. Okay. And inside here, uh, what we'll do is start to grab some of our uh, app settings values to set up our client, our database, and our collection. Okay. So so if our client equals new Mongo client, and we'll grab the configuration. And remember, we're getting the key here from our JSON. Database settings, connection string. OK. And then we'll grab the database from the client. So we'll say client.getDatabase. And here, we're going to give it the name of our database. So that's database settings. And that's our database name. And finally, we'll get the uh, set the forecast collection equals database dot get collection of type weather forecast. And we'll say configuration. And here we'll name it our collection. So database settings. And this can be our collection name. All right, so we set up our context. Now, let's go ahead and head back to our controller. OK, and what we'll do here is inject our context. So what I'll do is create a private variable here. Private read only, and we'll say I weather context. OK, and we'll inject that into the constructor. Say. Other context, perfect. Visual Studio auto completed that. Now, here I'll just say var uh, weather forecast. I'll say forecast here. And before we return it back, we will just store it in our context. So we'll say await uh, weather context dot uh, uh, forecast. And we can use insert many async. We'll insert the forecast. Okay. And what I'll do is uh, make this a task. We're making this async here. And we will return the forecast. And let's see if it gets stored in our MongoDB collection. All right, so I'll go ahead and, uh, oh, we have to do one more thing. We have to inject this in our pipeline. Don't forget to do that. So before we build our app, we need to kind of set up our application services here, inject. So we'll say builder.services.addScoped, and we'll say I weather context. And the implementation is going to be the weather context. Perfect. I'll go ahead and run this again. And hopefully, we get our documents inserted into our weather collection. So you'll notice it's very simple to hook up MongoDB. And I'm waiting for the oh uh, app setting. Oh, OK, or I'm missing some. Let me stop it and check my app settings again. I am missing, oh, missing a comma there. Yeah, there we go. And we'll relaunch the weather API, hit our Swagger page, go and try it out, execute, get them back, Let's check our MongoDB. I'll go ahead and refresh the data. 
go ahead and refresh that. Refresh databases and should see. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, sorry, I just hit enter on the search. Ah, there we go. We see a bunch of our forecasts that are sta saved in our MongoDB. So again, you could take advantage of the context here and start to uh, use methods. Again, you can create a service layer, repository layer, um, inject your context in your repository layer, let's say. Right now, I'm just, just for this sample, I'm injecting it in the controller, which is okay, but generally you want to layer everything. And notice I have MongoDB available. I can retrieve data, perform CRUD operations with MongoDB, running on my Docker container. All right, hope that was fun. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. See you next time.